I'm just messing around with the CB performance. Uh, we're gonna install the new CB black box. Uh, the other one's connected right now, see? The one that doesn't work. Um, it, it, everything works except the uh, the halt sensor is not picking it. It doesn't pick it up. I think it, something blew, it, blew up inside the uh, CB performance box. And I think I probably did it. I'm probably the one that shorted it out or something. And I, but I don't remember ever doing that, but I'll just blame myself. Alright, so this car doesn't have uh, an electric fuel pump, so it doesn't, you know, you crank it, it doesn't, it, it, it's not going to start right up. It's because uh, we got a mechanical pump. So I just want to see if this guy, I'm sorry, this guy uh, starts measuring as I crank it. You know, crank, 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 crank. it should give me something, and timing also should give me something. Um, remember, this is the bad computer. Okay, here we go. Nothing. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and install this guy and see what happens. Okay, this is the old one. Okay, she's out. Disconnect the vacuum line. Okay, put that one over there. Get the new one in here. Like yay. Come on. Okay, she's in. Now we're gonna hook up the vacuum line. If I can. Okay. She's connected. And she put up a fight. Alright. Let's try that again. See if we have, let's see if it has ignition. Okay, we should go green. And we have, okay, that is good. She's connecting. Okay, here she goes. I need timing, timing and I need RPM. There we go. Look at that. She's running! Uh, what's happening is that I had the key turned for too long. The choke deactivated. So that's why it's dying. Let me see what kind of map we got. I have no idea what the map is. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna have to work on this map. Definitely. Okay. Let me screw around with this and uh, we're gonna change this to a different map. Man, this thing is a beast. <laughs> oh my god. Sounds beautiful. Listen to this beast. what I call a real motor. Okay, we're gonna check the timing, make sure it is 20. Oh. 
We're way off. Way off. I gotta adjust that. Perfect. Now it's 20. I say we're good. I say we're good. Oh, one more thing. These electric uh, uh, oil pressure gauges are only for reference. Reference. Do not use, do, don't go by this. Uh, this one's off by about 10 pounds. It's marking, uh, when the, the engine's idling, it, if it's 27 right there. Let me see if I can get this a little bit better like 24 25 okay when I go like uh, 3,000 rpms it only goes up to like 30 but on the gauge I put a an actual uh, gauge a physical gauge back there and it's at 50 so it's like 15 to 20 pounds off at high rpm low rpm it's very high also so it's only for reference don't trust these things um, yeah, so we're probably going to get the Fahrenheit one. I, I, I don't know what the F that means, centigrade. What the hell does that even mean? You know what I mean? Not to, you know, piss on the rest of the world that uses centigrade, but I'm used to Fahrenheit. It just makes more sense using Fahrenheit. So we're going to get the other one because I screwed up. They're only 19 bucks. All right. All right. That's for the oil temperature. You know, I've been asked a couple of questions regarding why I have bugs. Um, short answer is I've always had bugs since I was a teenager. So I guess I got bit by the beetle bug uh, disease. <laughs> it's a disease because you spend a lot of money into it. Put a lot of money into it. And doesn't make the wife very happy. But whatever. She'll get over it. Um, and also, what's it like to drive... A beetle one of these babies okay so best way best thing I can say is uh, if you don't like attention getting one of these babies is not your thing uh, these bring a lot of attention you get a lot of honks on the road you get a uh, thumbs up the wave you get the uh, the guys or people slowing down behind you to take video or pictures. Um, let's see, several times I've been parked and then people come up to me and say, Hey, can we take a picture of your beetle or bug, whatever, whatever they call it? And um, I always tell them, yeah, sure, go ahead. No big deal. And then also it's the, quite the conversation starter at the gas station. It's and it it always goes it always kind of goes like this. Uh, hey, I used to have a bug back in the day, and and uh, I had it for four years, and then I got rid of it, and I regretted it ever since. Well, shouldn't have you shouldn't have sold it. Should have bought a new car and then kept this on the side, and eventually you're going to be working on it. But uh, what's it like to drive one of these? Basically. It, um, you need to lower the front end. I know if you're going for a, you know, a resto, a complete resto, then I guess you would be high. But it, they drive like shit. Be honest. I mean, I'm honest. Brutally honest. They drive like shit. Very, very dangerous, I think. Especially in a windy, windy situation. It'll kick you all over the place. Even lowered, it'll, the wind will still kick you around, but it's not as bad. Um, but yeah. The main thing is basically drop spindles, disc brakes, and then the rear. Install the front cylinders, brand new. 
the, the brake cylinders and install them in the rear okay because they're bigger that'll create more clamping force in the back because the front ones are going to be overpowering overpowering too much clamping force over here so you're going to lock up your fronts when you're trying to make a turn in the rain you're gonna die oh which brings me to the next <laughs> to the next thing um safety wise these things are death traps okay no abs no traction control no creature comforts, no AC, no nothing, no airbags, nothing. Okay, they're death traps. You still want to buy one? Ah, huh? ah, huh? you probably do, huh? Like, I don't blame you. I would, I, I do, you know, you know, I drive it every day, you know, I'm still here. Ah, wait, that's wood. Okay, there we go. Had to do that. Anyways, uh, the best thing I can tell you about this, it, this thing will give you an adrenaline rush when you drive the car close to, uh, I'm going to say 80 to 90. It'll it'll give you an adrenaline rush. It really will. Okay. Uh, modern car, you can drive it at 110 and it feels like you're doing 50 or 60 miles an hour. It, zero adrenaline, just nothing. It's just, if you're an adrenaline junkie, this is the car for you. Okay. These are the car for you. Definitely. Um... Like I said, they, these things do bring a lot of attention. Here's the thing. If you're the kind of person that does not like attention, don't buy one of these, okay? Don't even go there. You're an introvert like I am. Don't buy this. But you already have one. I've had them forever. So it wasn't like this even 10 years ago, okay? Now they bring a lot of attention. And I guess the best advice for you uh, is if money allows... Buy a, a Ferrari, a Lamborghini, any supercar will do. NSX, whatever. Who cares? Anything will do. It will not bring the same of attention that you get with these two vehicles, with these bugs. A, a Baja bug, even if it's completely ratty, it'll bring a lot of attention. So, um, I'll give you a little tour on this car. Uh, basically... This is the way it looks. I've got the tear or the uh, the eyelashes that I put on there a long time ago. They're kind of I put them on sideways so they look like they're cross-eyed. <laughs> Why? Right? I can't really tell. Probably if it's outside, you might be able to tell. But whatever. Um, when I painted this bug about ten years ago, or over ten years ago, definitely over ten years ago. Yeah. Uh, I, I redid everything, the whole paint thing, you know, I did everything, it's all green, everything's green. Uh, get one of these, these will minimize all the air going in through the dash, it'll go through right through the dash and you'll feel it. Especially when it's freezing cold outside, you definitely want that, it'll help on the leaks, air leaks. Um, that is a Riviera that I run as a spare, it doesn't fit there because it's got a wide tire. So it doesn't fit there. So I just carry it up here for, you know. And why do I have wire? <laughs> That's for my job. And a blower. that I have to blow out a trailer when I get unloaded. But that's a different story. Um, so this is work stuff that I have. So I did replace my bumpers. You know, when I got them a couple of years ago, uh, they were still very inexpensive. Everything here is all new. New rubbers, new seals, new chromey thingy this thing this is all new this is new this is the lenses are new gaskets are new the wipers are new um the obviously those are new um the rims were brand new uh the tires were brand well obviously the runners are brand new uh the carpet the headliner brand new um, the dash is brand new. I just redid the, the color matching on the, on the, uh, they look a lot better when they match with this stuff and that, and then the glove compartment matches the, the, uh, the car. They just look a lot better. They look a lot sharper. Yeah, I don't leave them black because they look kind of, kind of dull. Um, anyways, brand new gaskets on the back are brand new. These lenses are brand new. Those are brand new. Well, if you call t 10 years new, they're <laughs> they're only 10 years old. 
<laughs> but everything was brand new, okay? Everything was brand new. The dropping plates, I it has side plates. The side plates that go from uh, the torsion beam to the to the axles. Those uh, are adjustable, so it can go up or down. So I did that because I just didn't want to pull out those splines every time I want to change ride height. So I did that just so that I can adjust it as I go. You know, as, as I feel like I want to go up higher or lower, lower from the, the rear end of the vehicle. Um, my muffler does exit right here. Okay. Um, that's really about it on this car. Now let's go to my son's car. He's got some uh, Porsche, some Porsche uh, wheels. These are 914 wheels. These are original, okay? No, they didn't come from a 914 that I had. Those actually had the Rivieras the, that I'd showed you that this car has in the front. But these are from a 914, I believe. I could be wrong, you know, whatever. If I am wrong, please make a note down there and make, make just let me know. Hey, man, those are not from there, okay. But I, I'm pretty sure they're, they're from a 914 Porsche. Um, this one belonged to a, a buddy at work. They just didn't have time for it. So he let me have it for $500. And he told me that this car belonged to the shop owner. The one that was on Nile Street in uh, North Ber Northeast Bakersfield. But the guy closed down about, oh, 20 years ago. And uh, that used to be his car. He was the shop owner. This used to belong to him. That's why this car is in, it's got zero rust. Even though it spent, I think, two years in Baja, California, you know, near the salt. But it didn't rust. No rust whatsoever. Zero. I couldn't find any rust anywhere on this car. This thing is a rust bucket, okay? Like in here, you can't see it, but trust me, it's, it's, it's like really rusted in there. I need to replace the whole firewall. I'm not gonna do that because this is Bakersfield. It stopped rusting. It doesn't rust anymore. <laughs> Bumpers are still original. My son just uh, plastic coated them black, but um, these are new. Uh, the, okay, but this car didn't come with an engine. The engine was blown, and uh, the the dual the single port engine is actually over there on the side of the house. It's covered up, and it's fully rebuilt, and it runs fine. It was running fine, and we just installed this twenty two thirty four single carburetor. So basically, it's just gonna no venturi on here. This thing is gonna be a monster. This thing pulls. I used to have this on the green bug, and trust me, this thing was way faster than what I've got in my in my Porsche engine. That's a twenty two fifty six, which has more power now. But it still lags behind this one. This one pulls like crazy. Single carburetor. Haha. -ha. Whatever. Who cares? Uh, I still haven't even touched this. Uh, I've got all my parts here for so we can convert it uh, and fully run it. But we just haven't done anything. This one has an interior, a modern interior. Uh, my son just doesn't care for authentic. It's just garbage, uh, in my opinion. Whatever. A lot of people would say, oh, what are you saying? That is sacrilegious. You know what? It's sacrilegious. It's sacrilegious. Whatever. But in my cars, it's heavenly to have modern seats. <laughs> but basically, we did the same treatment, the dash treatment, you know, color matched everything. Because it, it just looks a lot better. Um, carpet is new. Everything's new. Headliner, we went black on this one and it turned out bitchin'. New door panels, like the green car. Everything's new on this car. The whole interior is new. New, new. Steering wheel, we got it at the at the drags for VWs. We found it. It was like, hey, that'll fit. Cool. And, um, yeah. But basically, it's a similar restore as this one. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I needed mids. I needed to be able to hear the voice, so I'm using that as a as a mids. Yeah, you gotta do what you gotta do for your sound to sound good. Um, pedals are down here, which is really really weird on the bug. Okay, really weird. Um, it takes a while to get used to. On this one, I have a bunch of gauges. I have uh, oil pressure. I definitely recommend you have an oil pressure. Don't get the electrical ones. Do a manual one that has a little oily line that goes all the way, you know, from the back to here. Can't really see it. Yeah, you probably can. This is right. Anyway, uh, I have a voltage thing also because that's very uh, common for the uh, what you call it, the alternator band to, to throw it or whatever. Or if you're having alternator problems, um, this is a good way to spot the problem. 
And then I have a narrow band. I used to have Y band, but Y bands are just not reliable. So I'm not going there. The digital Y bands, they're not reliable. So I'm going to wait until somebody actually makes something that's reliable. And uh, I've got a RPM and oil temperature right here. And that's pretty much it. Um, I just went modern stereo. I could care less about being authentic or having the stereos that look, I mean, that are modern, but they look retro. I could care less about stuff like that, okay? I do it because this is my car. I do whatever I want. You know what I mean? Everything's cool on the, in this thing. It, it, it is quite a ride when you're riding. It is completely different. This is not This is not your, your regular car, okay? It's, this is Farfig Nugent. <laughs> oh my god Farfig Nugan so I would say if you're gonna get one make sure that you're at least mechanically uh, able to fix it you're mechanically inclined um, if you know somebody that can do that go ahead and do that you know if he's able to you know he offers to help you know okay get one but if you're not mechanically inclined don't get it this thing's gonna break a lot, break down a lot, but the parts are not that expensive and they're not that hard to fix. So it's all up to you. Uh, what else? Um, yeah, buy a Lamborghini if you don't like the attention. I mean, you see a Lamborghini driving by, it's like, oh, nice car. Mm, whatever. But you know, you're not rushing for your phone or whatever to take a picture, right? On these, people do actually do that. They, they're like. They shouldn't be doing that because they're gonna crash. But you know, it's 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 whatever. Um, it brings a lot of attention. Okay, your introvert don't get this car. Um, and if somebody waves at you, wave back. Dear God, just wave back. Give them the peace sign or something. You know, or, or at least thumbs up or whatever. You know, be courteous. Uh, they're they're going out of their way to telling you, hey man, I love your car, but they're inside their car and obviously they're gonna they're not gonna shout at you. So. Be kind, you know. Don't be like, oh god, they're can't leave me alone. Don't buy this car if that's you. Um that's pretty much it. And I'll cut it short right there. Uh I might actually go and, and look at those. Uh, I got I got some uh CB performance, what do you call it? Uh uh emotion tubes, and I'm gonna compare them to the uh China ones to see where the, the difference is on the drillings. Uh I suspect that uh the China ones are going to be all effed up. And this is probably one of the reasons we are having a lot of problems tuning. It's because the emulsion tubes are screwed up. Oh, yeah. And I got some uh, velocity stacks, aluminum ones. But they don't fit. They don't fit. So I'm going to have to modify those. Uh, I'll show you how I modify them. And I'll, I'll give you the rundown on those two, two things. And that should be it. Okay, let's get to it. These don't fit. I mean, they fit on the carburetor. But they don't work with the air filter. They don't work with the air filter. It won't go down because the base is too big. That's as big as, as low as it'll go. Okay. Alright. I'm going to try to fiddle with it. Maybe I can make it, maybe stretch it out or something. I don't think so, but I'm going to fiddle with it. That's how much I had to remove. I mean, this thing was like over here, like that wide. So I had to go like that. Same thing this side. Okay, the filter's gonna be on this side, right? And this is gonna be this way, like that. Filter's gonna be on this side. Uh, this side I didn't go too too deep because I didn't need to. What was happening is on this side, the, it was actually hitting the uh, the main uh, and air corrector uh, tubes. Um, you know, the long one that goes in the center, the two, uh, these guys, is actually hitting right there and there. You know how they go like that? Whatever. I think you can, uh, figure it out. Um, I'm gonna put these on, on the other carburetor. Okay, now that I grinded them, they, they're, they're really tight. The, the air filter actually did go down all the way, but it's, I can feel that it's tight. But it did seat all the way down. Alright. Okay. So now you know if you get those aluminum ones, you're going to have to do the same thing I did. Okay, so now I'm going to see 
Bam, see? Perfect. All right, I can fit my uh, flow meter thing. All right, we're good. So I was looking at them. It looks like the orifice, they did get correct. They got them correct. Um, yeah, they got them correct. Never mind. This maybe it's because it's shinier. It just looks different. It's exactly the same. There's no slop. The only difference is this right here. So wait, I got an idea. So we'll do this. We'll hang the other one right next to it. And see if there if it lines up. Yeah, see, it does line up. The ridges right here line up perfectly. So they got that one correct. Okay, let's see. Let's do this one now. Yeah. That's correct. They got it. They got this. All right. Let's see this down here. And they also got that correct. It's correct. All right. So the only one they messed up on are these right here. Oops. Yeah. These right here are messed up. They're not at the same level. See? These go in right there. Right on that border right there. These are a couple of millimeters up high, like uh, a millimeter and a half, maybe two. Okay, I already ran into a problem. Um, I can't get this thing to slide on. I can't get it to slide on in the seat on this edge right here, this edge to this. I can't get it. Uh, the... It's different. It's a different size right here. Different OD. Let me measure that real quick. Okay, that's 10 on the um, on the China. I mean on the CB performance. Let me see what the Chinese ones measure at. Oh, that's China right there. We're at 3. 7.03 versus 7.10. Oh, no bueno. Okay. So I might have to machine the uh, the CB Performance ones to make it work. It's either that or ordering more stuff from uh, CB Performance, but I'm not going to do that. So I'll just machine it real quick right now. Okay, just in case you guys, you know, you have the same problem. So what I did, I just put it on my drill press, spin it, grab a file, very carefully, just do this. Make sure you put enough even pressure, not to you know cockeyed or cockeyed this way. And then go slowly and then just test fit it once you see it going in kind of super tight but going in okay you stop okay you turn it back on and use like a 400 this is a I believe it's a 400 doesn't really matter oh it's a 1200 okay it's a 1200 so I just turn it back on again and then just go over it and that smooths it all out and you're able to seat all the way like that. Ta da! And that is pretty much it, you guys. I have to cut it, cut it short. That was interesting with those CV performance uh, emulsion tubes. So now we know <laughs> why sometimes our, our stuff was just not working right. I have a shimmy on my clutch. I haven't been able to shake that shimmy. I don't know what's going on there. Anyways, let's just go. And, uh, let's get going. It's about 105 right now. Yeah, 105. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely don't get a bug if you live in a very hot climate and you're going to be driving all day or something. Probably not the best car for running errands in a hundred plus degree weather. Okay. Small pull? Yeah, sure, why not? Woo! Dev 
definitely pulls very hard. <laughs> the other motor, the 2234 single carburetor Novin 3, way more power than this thing. Way more power. Anyways, I gotta go. Adios muchachos. Adios muchachas. Ahí los estoy guachando.